My son, last year, not a lie, not an exaggeration, got an award for being best little brother. <laughs> what did he do to earn that award? Nothing, not a thing. He was just born, and they didn't have anything else to give, so they named him Best Little Brother, and he was so proud of that. You're Best Little Brother. Oh, that's so great. I've never been Best Little Brother. And I'm like, this is a trash award, kid. This is, they, they just didn't have anything to, you know, your future's kind of bleak if you're excited about this. This is the way the, the, the nation, the, 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 uh, the management, the leadership, the, the, what I call the bones of our nation have been formed here and was passed down to the baby boomers. This is what's coming. This is my generation. These are the millennials. This is the participant trophy, just like my daughters. And I, as a generation Xer, received at this, as an Xer, received it uh, as well. This is where we've been shaped and formed. This is the future. And I don't want to draw a bleak picture, but it's very, very different. It is very, very different. This is where, if you're still in the workplace, this is where you've been shaped, a parent, a grandparent, a, a mentor, a coach, something, Here's who's back in your workplace right now keeping an eye on things while you're with me, all right? <laughs> and they're interpret, and they're younger than the birth certificate would suggest. And this is where my millennials go, I don't know that I like that. It's a life stage. It's not maturity. And this is a, kind of a debate I got into yesterday. It's not maturity. It's a life stage much younger than the age would suggest. So this is ridiculously small, but when I work with leadership groups, this is what I tell them, and I wanted to read this to you. Parenting styles combined with advances in technology have done away with many of the hurdles of growing up. Some of what has been lost along the way are the defining struggles of childhood, such as boredom on a summer day. You remember this. Finding a summer job, learning to communicate and to empathize, conflict management. If you're a boomer, don't expect the younger generations to have these same backgrounds. Your backgrounds show accomplishments over struggles. Theirs will show accomplishments, but probably many fewer struggles. And, I th and that's kind of where we're going here. And as I told the little conference session, the, the chat room earlier this morning, I'm a father of four. My oldest is 12 years old. And it informs my decisions as a parent. How do I do this? Do I tell my child, it's good for you to be bored? That's the way people develop character. Uh, you know, rub some tough in it, kid, or something like that. Or do I facilitate or continue along the way with my, my peers do of taking these burdens? We had dinner, and this, I hesitate to mention these things because it makes it sound like I'm setting the rule based on a one-off experience. But we have dinner with a, a couple friend of ours who has a child, and they said, our child has never struggled for anything. I'm like, man, you don't realize what you're doing to that kid. So it's a, and then it, we enter the workplace and you have things like, and this begins to make sense perhaps, as I, I used to use a slide for a while back, there was a recruiting piece from a software company out in Southern, or I'm sorry, Arizona, out in uh, Scottsdale. And it said, you should want to come to work here because we have a cereal bar with 60 different cereals available at any time. Birth certificate age minus five to seven years equals uh, life stage age. Ah, I get the cereal bar. That makes sense now. Yeah. Bring your bird to work day. Oh, that'll make you happy, won't it? Yeah. Please wear some clothes today. Oh, that doesn't make me happy. We're going to rub your back today at 2. Oh, that'll make me happy in the lobby and all this. So we see these things uh, that, are, that are, in my opinion, happiness th things. But what it has led to, and this, I'm not sure whether Neil has discussed this or I didn't see it in the content, this is one, two, three, four different pieces of research that suggest that empathy is taking longer to develop in the next generation. Because of the technologies that you and I know and that have been discussed in the front of this room today, the technologies have impacted the ability to empathize. It has not eliminated it. It has impacted its growth and its development. It stymied it so that late 20s, early 30s, it's finally fully developed. Whereas in you, if you're a baby boomer, in many cases the Xers, the boomers, and certainly the, the, the silent generation, the GI generation, empathy had been, been developed in the late teens because the over-socialization, as, as Neil talked about it, today is taking longer to develop. We put these fascinating miracle devices in front of people's hands, and they can do everything. They can check the weather in Tokyo right now, which is just fascinating. But can they talk to me well? Can they talk to your customers well? Can they take your phone call and answer it well? This empathy thing is very important, particularly in any customer-facing situation. And I work with my clients, workplace. You need to make sure this empathy thing is around. 
All product knowledge and no empathy makes for a poor experience. All empathy and no product knowledge makes for a different type of poor experience. So we got to find a little bit of both, and it's getting harder to find in this generation due to these things. And you know what I'm doing here. It's one of the consequences of affluence, of technology, et cetera. So before I go on and talk, draw it to a close, the exceptions to the rule. And I talked to this about this in the chat session a little bit earlier today. My experience, there's going to be five categories of people who don't fit everything I've just said. Oldest children. This gets into birth order theory, which is the equivalency of voodoo to some people, but I find it's pretty accurate. The oldest child often doesn't fit their generational profile. They're much more like their parents than their generational peers. Military background. Patience and chains of command and hierarchy and things like that change people, change the way they behave. A lot of this these generational characteristics, we're focusing on the millennials, pop out with a military experience. Farmers' kids, by far my favorite, by far my favorite. Every workplace I've been into loves their farmer's kids. These kids work. These kids know how to do it. They work harder than their peers regardless of the generation. And it's not a fluke or a mistake that alien abductions happen in farming communities. <laughs> the aliens have figured it out before the rest of us have. They're out there staffing up. They're getting some staff. Are there ever alien abductions here on Hilton Head Island? No, no. You and I could walk to the beach and we'd realize this is where the aliens drop them off. Like, this didn't work out. Immigrants from non-Western nations and their kids sometime and with a, from a culture with a rigorous shared rite of passage. It was an insurance company. Cam, we want to know how the generations define ethics. This was 2008, 2009. We want to be known as the most ethical insurance company in the land. So we did research. How do the definitions of ethics change over time? And there's a number of things we came up with, but for the purpose of this slide, a shared rite of passage creates similar characteristics in the community, not just in the generation, but in the community. And we as a society no longer have a rigorous shared rite of passage. It used to be the military. We no longer have that. We have tons of rites of passage, but no more that are rigorous. You have pockets of our society, and the ones that I can affirm confidently is the Mormon mission changes the kids that come out on the other side. And you talk to the kids, you talk to the parents, you talk to the community. We love getting them back. They're, they're contributors at that point. They're community citizens at that point. That passage is difficult for them, and it's difficult for their folks back home, and when they come home, they're changed. Those, these five categories, make people differ from their generational profile. So if you're still responsible for hiring at any point, one of your interview questions is, as a child, you woke up every morning and pulled your shades back. What did you see? If they say pasture, hire them. That's all you need. <laughs> Interview closed, we'll take you, pal. That's all we need to do. So with that, we're going to put a pause on this, bring the chairs up, and take your questions in a conversation. Thank you all very much. <laughs>